I try to provide some reaction without spoiling too much of the plot. But here it's going to be a little tough because there's really not that much that happened. And I'd have to say so far this is the worst of the season. But that's not bad because the average has been actually pretty, pretty high. Really it should be in a range of, I guess, 7.5 to 8.5. So this will get a 7.5 because it does feel like they are just padding out the plot. We're stalling until we get to the final episode and then something really big will happen. Here we're just getting a few tidbits, which were nice. Uh, you appreciate them, but really didn't amount to much. So we finally have a bit more focus on Christina and the Christina Dolores slash Hale paradox. Now the writers have insisted that Dolores is dead, so we're not looking at Dolores. So what is occurring? Well, the best I can piece together is I guess Christina is a kind of code based on Dolores, but it's not Dolores. And when Petty gives the revelation that somehow she's controlling the world, you're kind of like, wait, what does that mean exactly? Are you saying she has godlike power? Are you saying she influences others? Or are you literally saying she can control others? She's just not aware of this ability. Just a lot of questions. But we do get some answers as to what Hale is up to. Apparently, she has a kind of, for lack of a better word, apocalypse complex. If you know the X-Men, there's a character called Apocalypse who basically, through a lot of terror and coercion, wants mutant kind to evolve. And he's basically trying to force the species to become more powerful and more perfect. And so he launches all these weird terror campaigns to do that. And that apparently is her goal, that the host transcend or whatever but she's not pleased that they're not doing that that they're not evolving fast enough so some of it is funny the way she's basically tearing down works of fiction works of art that they're doing and saying start over you're not doing it well enough and that does play into christina's role as a video game developer that explains that at least that she's fascinated with how hosts will quote, create art and I guess that kind of explains why Caleb is going to be kept alive. He's sort of an experiment she's running. And she is genuinely curious to see why is Caleb so interesting and important to Maeve and the others. But really the thing that I found most fascinating here is William, that finally he is evolving or developing. I didn't mind him being a kind of loyal enforcer. I mean, this is the man in black. We appreciate him just killing stuff. So I think that was well done and giving him enough power to be a force to be reckoned with. But it would have just been boring him being a lapdog and just obeying orders. And so here we're starting to see cracks in that. And he's questioning his reality. Whose side is he on? What is he fighting for? Why is he doing these things? Again, we've seen this before with the Matrix. That Agent Smith slowly develops something resembling a human consciousness and wants to make his own decisions. But there it got, I think, a little silly and loopy. And I may be very alone, but I think Matrix Resurrections at least made some effort at developing him in a more interesting direction because him just wanting to destroy everything I thought was not very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see where William is going to end up. Is he going to join the rebel side? Is he going to stay loyal to Hale but have his own agenda? Is he going to create a kind of third option between her utopia and the past? Some interesting, exciting stuff with him. But yeah, a lot of the episode just did, I think, what a lot of people have criticized Westworld for doing, just giving a lot of false starts, having all these weirdo plot paradoxes and mysteries, but they don't mean anything, they don't go anywhere. But again, they've earned enough credibility with the earlier episodes that I'm confident it is going to go somewhere. But this felt like a lot of stasis. Maybe it's just me, but it did seem like the pacing was way more slow than the other episodes. It just didn't seem to go anywhere. I can't say skip the episode entirely. There were some critical key moments, but again, it did feel like the most skippable episode of the entire season. There were cute moments like Hale masquerading as a college friend. That was fun, but it does bring up a lot of plot issues, a lot of character issues. Of like, wait, what is going on? How does that work? Wouldn't she notice that there are some gaps in her memory? It just felt like a bunch of showy nonsense. And for the most part, this season has been pretty good at taming themselves there and really staying laser focused on the plot and the main story and using the flashbacks and or the plot twists where necessary. But overall, I'm still satisfied. I think if the 
first three episodes were a little too fast, and episode four was also pretty fast, but slowed down just enough to give us the revelations, especially with Maeve being this kind of super weapon. Okay, that was, I think, well balanced, but here we're going too far the other direction. It's just way too slow. Not enough is happening. We're just having a lot of sitting down and talking, and this is what people really criticize the prequel trilogy for in Star Wars. It's just a lot of talking, 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 but nothing is really happening. But I appreciated what the prequels were trying to do. But here I think they established a pretty good pace with the first four episodes. And here it just felt we're just really just waiting, close out the season with a really shocking moment. And that's fine. It does happen. We always have filler episodes in a season in television. But this felt the most fillerish for no reason. So I'm forced to give this a 7.5. I do recommend seeing it, but don't have high expectations. It just felt really kind of silly. I mean, just being told, yeah, Christina, you're God. You're like, what does that mean? Do you mean she's a literal God? Does she have literal God-like powers is she, as a metaphoric God that people have centered their lives around her? What does all this mean? It just feels like a lot of meandering nonsense, which basically people made fun of Westworld for for a long time, but which this season really corrected. And now it seems they're going back to the bad old ways, but hopefully it was just one episode and we're going to get back on track real soon.